Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Daniel Rose, and I'm here bringing you another video from Jerusalem. As you guys can hear, I have a horrible, horrible cold that is stubbornly, refuse, stubbornly refusing to get better. But uh, nevertheless, this is a video that's important to me to make. Therefore, I am going to make it. So I came across, I usually don't, firstly, let me just preface this by saying that I usually don't do the Hasbara thing, the defending Israel on the internet thing. It's not my thing. Why? Because I've done a whole separate vlog about this. I don't think it usually is a constructive use of time. People who hate Israel hate Israel. Um, and it's a bad argument to think that people who hate something on irrational grounds are going to be swayed by logic, right? That's That just doesn't make sense. So besides, second thing is I would say it's a cesspool of negativity to get into the whole fruitless um, enterprise of arguing with these people usually doesn't um, it's not only a waste of time which is one thing I think it's actually probably bad for the people doing it because it drags you into a hate-filled environment nevertheless now and again there's something I come across on the internet that is so egregious excuse my use of this weird word that I feel compelled to say something, such as the case with this news report on the journal.ie. Now, for those who don't know, the journal.ie is pretty much the main online news website. Uh, I'm going to just make myself a small bit bigger so you, can, you guys can see, see my face here on the, on the recording. It's pretty much the main online news website in Ireland. Now, people will say, I've been seeing people on Twitter saying, you know, Ah, uh, the journal.ie is not that big. It's actually pretty big. Now, I'm relying on what I knew when I left Ireland seven years ago, but it's pretty much like the Irish Times of Israel. This is not some website that a high schooler is running from his mother's basement. This is a legit website that's selling, you know, advertising to um, enterprise companies, major sponsors, and it's a legit thing. Now, not only that, but scroll down to the bottom of the journal.ie, and you guys will see that the following text written in its footer after this uh, slurry of uh, the usual anti-Israel crap that gets published in the comment section on this website. And it's consistently anti-Israel. And by the way, and I again, I use this advisedly, it frequently veers into transparent, transparent anti-Semitism. I don't say that all criticism of Israel is anti-Semitic, but the comment section on the journal.ie frequently contains explicit anti-Semitism and they do usually do nothing about it. Stuff like comparing Israel to the Nazis, what the Israel, what the Israeli army is doing to the Palestinians is worse than the Nazis, Israel controlled the Jews, controlled the world media, all this complete BS. It's safe haven for it on the journal.ie. But take a quick glance, I'm going to put myself back to uh, microscopic here. Take a quick glance at the footer of the journal.ie and you can see the journal.ie supports the work. Look at this grand language of the Press Council of Ireland and the Office of the Press Ombudsman and your staff operate within its code of practice. Wow, you can obtain a copy of the code or contact the council at presscouncil.ie. Great, so let's go on to presscouncil.ie and let's check out this fantastic code of practice that the journal.ie adheres to. Here we go, guys, up on your screen. It's free, it's open source. And let me just show you what it says. Principle one, truth and accuracy. In reporting news and information, the press shall strive at all times for truth and accuracy. Principle 1.2, when a significant, here we go, guys, listen carefully. When a significant inaccuracy, misleading statement, or distorted report or picture has been published, I pause deliberately. It shall be corrected promptly and with due prominence. 1.3. When appropriate, a retraction, apology, explanation or response shall be published promptly and with due prominence. Term 1.4. It's not written here, but I suggest it that it exists and it reads as follows. Except in the case of reporting about Israel. Because when you look at this report, 
the Irish Israel Alliance more than a day ago. Um, sorry, I'm just trying to grab my cursor back into OBS Studio here. The Irish Israel Alliance more than 24 hours ago. So we talk about, you know, reasonable speech here, pointed out that this headline is a disgrace. UN demands probe. Now, by the way, um, for those who don't know this, I studied, I have actually got a degree in journalism. I was initially working as a freelance journalist. Then I went into communications. I actually worked as a summer as a copy editor. So I know a thing or two about journalism and how journalism works in this instance is you can see this is wire copy. So this comes from the AFP, which is a wire agency. So there's other other wire agencies like Reuters or the Associated Press, the AP. And usually how it works, whether we're talking about print newspapers or online newspapers, is the newspapers will subscribe to a certain wire agency that gives them rights to reprint their wire reports. But the decision of how to word the headline is typically made by the news organization itself, specifically the copy editors. So when you see this here, UN demands probe into killing of al Jazeera journalists by Israeli forces. This, guys, is a freaking lie. Firstly, um, when we talk about the code of practice of the press council, this is presented as an objective fact when it's not. And even if we disregard that fact, right now the evidence indicates that uh, there was a gunfire fight between the Israelis uh, going into Janine to conduct an uh, arrest operation of Palestinian militants. And I personally, you can dispute this, think that it's probably safe to say that the fatal shot who killed this Al Jazeera journalist emanated from armed Palestinian militants, irrespective of that. The Palestinians have refused to cooperate in an Israeli investigation or, for that matter, a third party investigation. And there is no way anyone on earth can say that Shireen Abu Akleh was killed decisively by Israeli forces. This is a flat out lie, mistruth, defamation against Israel written in black and white on the journal.ie and it's been more than 24 hours since the Irish Israel Alliance pointed out that this is a barefaced lie and I've personally again against my best instincts of getting drawn into this world of Hasbara I've been tweeting about this and again now what's the point to making this video Really, there's actually no point except to say that I wanted to record for those who don't believe that there can be such a thing as explicit anti-Israel bias in the media. Not surprising that it comes from the journal.ie. They frequently have explicit anti-Semitic content in the comment section, but nevertheless, it's educating. Um, so that's pretty much all I have to say in this video. Um, the journal.ie have had more than 24 hours to correct this. They claim to subscribe to a code of practice regulated by the Press Council of Ireland that demands objectivity in reporting. What this demonstrates personally, and if you look at the complaint process for the Press Council, you have to be in, you have to prove that you are directly affected. So it's a waste of time, essentially, for most people. By the way, 34,000 people. Let me just go back to the news article here for one sec. 34,000 people view this story on the journal.ie. That's the impression count here. Now, if you, that's just people, that's knowing a thing or two about digital marketing. That's people who viewed this webpage, right? That does not take into account people who viewed this headline containing the lie on the homepage of the journal.ie or people who viewed this headline on Google News or people who view this lie, lying headline via uh, RSS feeds or whatever. So. I would say the amount of people that have actually viewed this, um, this um, I would say almost an inciting headline, inciting a mistruth, inciting anti-Israel hatred based upon this complete mistruth at best, lie at worst, that 
Israel's killed an Al Jazeera journalist probably three times, I would estimate, the 34,000 people who've actually clicked into the article. Um, and this news organization, the journal.ie, which claims to subscribe to the regulatory code of practice of a completely powerless authority and is continuously filled with selective anti-Israel hatred, pro-Israel comments routinely get deleted. It's all a crock of rubbish. I was gonna say something else, but we'll say rubbish for now. That's pretty much all I have to say, guys. Thank you for watching this YouTube video. If you'd like to get more content from me, hopefully with a better voice next time, please subscribe to this YouTube channel.